Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Second Act, released in the year 2018. At the start of the movie, a woman named Maya Vargas showers in the bathroom while her boyfriend surprises her with a birthday cake. It's also the day she's been waiting for for the past 15 years. She has a meeting with her boss and expects to get promoted to the position of manager. She works at a value grocery store as an assistant manager. Later, as Maya's getting ready, she starts worrying that her boss, Wiskopf, might promote someone else with a better educational background. It turns out that Maya doesn't have a formal education degree, so she's nervous about it. However, her boyfriend Trey assures her that she's far smarter than book smarts and kisses her good luck before leaving for the office. At work, Maya shows her boss how much returns she and her team have made throughout the year. She explains that her niche is far ahead of the competitors. Maya also shows that she's implemented successful ideas like the Monday Moms program, a social club for moms where they can chit-chat while grocery shopping. Shortly after, Maya's best friend and a fellow employee, Joan, also joins her and explains more about the program. Unfortunately, Maya's worst fears come true, as Weisskopf announces that another employee named Arthur has been promoted as the new store manager. He also mentions that Maya wasn't considered for the position because she never went to college. Instead, he assigns her as Arthur's right hand. Later in the evening at Maya's surprise birthday party, Trey reflects on the time he met Maya for the first time. He was completely taken aback by how beautiful, brazen, and intelligent she was. He then toasts for a good life and hugs his girlfriend. However, Maya is disappointed that her life didn't turn out as she had expected. She expresses her frustration to Joan, complaining about the absurdity of not getting a job at 40 just because she didn't get a degree at 18. Just then, their conversation is interrupted by Joan's son, Dilly, who is also Maya's godson. Dilly is a computer genius who has been recently accepted to Stanford. Dilly brings over a birthday cake for Maya and asks her to make a wish. Given her situation, Maya says that her birthday wish is to travel back in time and go to a fancy school, where she can learn a lot of stuff. The following day at work, Arthur is driving Maya and the other employees crazy. Meanwhile, Joan informs Maya that a lady was asking about her for a job interview at the conglomerate Franklin & Clark. It turns out that Dilly wanted to help her, so he set up resumes and interviews under Maya's legal name for her as a birthday present. Maya initially doesn't think it's a good idea to change her job, but after getting annoyed with Arthur, she decides to go to Franklin & Clark. The following day, Maya arrives at the conglomerate but is shocked when she is sent up to the top floor to meet with the CEO, Anderson Clark himself. He is extremely impressed by her resume, which includes Harvard, Wharton, philanthropy, and the Peace Corps. Maya is shocked by the lies that Dilly has forged, but she goes along with it. Shortly after, Anderson's daughter Zoe, who's also one of the vice presidents at the company, pops in and introduces herself to Maya. In the next scene, Anderson shares that he's interested in having Maya as their company's consultant. He then asks her to give her honest opinions on some of their product lines, prompting Maya to give a speech. She mentions that one of their lotions isn't as organic as they show it to be, and that the prices are too high. Hearing this, Anderson is once again impressed, but Zoe is somewhat skeptical. After the interview, she rushes to Joan's apartment and confronts Dilly for creating fake resumes and even a fake social profile. Dilly, however, thinks he did a favor for her. The following day, Maya gets a call informing her that she's been hired for the consulting job, but she can't put herself together to say yes right away. As she confronts the dilemma about whether to accept the new job or not, Joan tells her that although she got the interview on a lie, she got hired because of herself. At work, when Arthur starts becoming difficult once again, Maya finally decides to quit her assistant manager job and join the new one. Later that evening, Maya approaches Trey and tells him about the new consulting job that she's been hired for. She explains about all the facilities and exposure she'll be getting over there, 
But Trey is concerned because of the lie. He then talks about getting married and having a family, but as always, Maya ignores the suggestion. As a result, Trey gets enraged and breaks up with her, leaving Maya devastated. In the next scene, Maya arrives at her new job, where she's greeted by her assistant, Ariana, and development assistant, Hildy. They take her to her new office room, which is much bigger than she had imagined. Meanwhile, because of Maya's comments in her interview, the CEO wants to revamp the company's beauty product line. In a meeting with the product scientists and all other stakeholders, including Ron, another development executive, Maya shares that the company needs to make all natural products. However, Zoe is skeptical and insists that they can't make it work as launching a new one would be too costly. Instead, she wants to make their current line more organic, while Maya wants to go 100% natural. Hearing the contrasting opinions, Anderson sets up two competing teams and gives them 10 weeks to come up with a new product and pitch. Sadly, most of the company's product scientists are pessimistic that they can create Maya's product, so they refuse to be a part of her team. Just when it seems that Maya has already lost the competition before it has even started, a product scientist named Chase agrees to help her. He mentions that he was recently cast out by his supervisor to make cat food, so he wants to take revenge on him. Meanwhile, as part of the new job, Maya gets a massive new apartment stocked with ample food and drinks, along with several gift cards. She and Joan are left in awe when they arrive at the apartment. Joan hurriedly gets some beers from the fridge and tells Maya that she deserves all these things. Maya, however, isn't so sure, and she misses her boyfriend, Trey. As the two talk, Joan presses her about the breakup and suggests that she stop punishing herself for giving up the baby she had when she was 17. It seems that Maya couldn't start a family with Trey because she had her own past to deal with. The following day at work, Maya clarifies their team goals and research techniques for product development. Meanwhile, Anderson approaches her and asks her to be the lead at a company rowing event. It turns out that Maya's fake resume also included that she was on a rowing team during her college years. Having no choice, Maya agrees to the request. Later, at the event, Maya completely messes up and causes the boat to crash. But Anderson finds the whole thing funny. Ron, however, finds it suspicious and begins checking on her references. He calls the Harvard office of the registrar and asks to check if Maya had graduated from the school. Surprisingly, the genius Dilly has already redirected the call to his cell phone, and he confirms that Maya had indeed attended the Ivy League school. In the meantime, Zoe asks Maya to speak Mandarin at a dinner with a Chinese distributor, since she is the only one who can speak the language, or at least that's something mentioned in her resume. Maya reluctantly agrees. Later, she brings her concern to Joan. Fortunately, the latter has an idea. Her cat's veterinarian, who's fluent in Mandarin, can translate for Maya via phone. Thankfully, everything pans out during dinner. The distributor becomes satisfied with Maya's presentation and agrees to sign an agreement with the company. Before parting ways, an impressed Zoe thanks Maya and offers to send her previous research on all natural products. In the following scene, Anderson calls Zoe to his office to tell her something important. He asks her to lock the door and we can see the two mumbling with each other, although it isn't clear what they're talking about at the moment. The movie then cuts to a scene where Maya goes to Zoe's apartment to get the research files. Zoe welcomes her in and Maya sees a lot of art on the walls. Zoe then reveals that she used to go to an art school in London, but when her mother died, she came back to the States to help her father with the company. After Zoe shows Maya around the apartment, she takes her to the bedroom and reveals that she was adopted by Anderson and his wife. She then discloses that she has just found out that Maya is actually her birth mother. It turns out that Anderson had called Zoe earlier to reveal the same, since he had been doing his research for quite a while now. With this revelation, Maya becomes excited and the two start spending a lot of time together. Later, Anderson reveals that he'd gone looking for Zoe's birth mother and found Maya online which is when he saw her resume and called her in for an interview just to meet her. However, when he heard her speech, he became impressed and hired her. 
One day at a park, Maya shares with Zoe that she was living in foster care and couldn't take care of her. That's why she had to give her up for adoption. She also mentions that she's very happy to see her daughter doing so well in life. As the two continue their emotional conversation, Maya encourages Zoe to return to art school. Later at the office, Maya and her team continue working hard to make an all-natural product, but their techniques fail to materialize into anything. At the company Christmas party, Ariana and Chase, who has had an ongoing flirtation for a while, finally kiss. Meanwhile, Ron implies that he knows Maya is full of lies and tells her that her product is going to be a disaster. Surprisingly, this gives Maya an idea to use the silver ginkgo plant that her grandfather had left for her. It turns out that the plant had survived the disaster of Hiroshima. After the party, Maya tells Chase about the plant, explaining that they can use its nutrients to give them an edge in their organic beauty product. She then gets the plant from Trey's apartment and her team of scientists immediately gets into action to use it in their product. Following a lot of hard work, Chase and Ariana share the good news that their product is finally working. The next day, the two sides present their products to the company board. That night, Maya attends Joan's birthday party, where she comes across Trey. He mentions that he's found out about her daughter Zoe, but is sad that she kept it from him all these years. Maya tries to apologize, but Trey walks away, telling her that no relationship can be based on a lie. Just then, Anderson calls Maya in the middle of the party and asks her to come to his office. When she arrives there, he says that the board has chosen to endorse her product. Anderson adds that she's been selected to present the product at a live event that will be broadcasted on popular media outlets. Maya didn't think things would escalate so quickly. She now fears that she will soon be exposed. But having no other choice, she agrees to deliver the speech. On the event day, Zoe welcomes Maya on stage to unleash their new product. On the other hand, Ron finally gets confirmation that Maya has faked her resume and prepares to tell the truth to Anderson. But before he can do so, Maya does it herself while delivering her speech. She realized what Trey had said was true, that no relationship can be built on a lie. So she decided to come clean with everyone. Maya then apologizes to Anderson and Zoe and asks her teammates to take over the stage. After a while, an extremely hurt Zoe approaches her outside and wonders if all the time they spent together was an act too. She then expresses her anger at Maya for always being absent from her life. Before leaving, she also reveals that she's returning to London for art school. The movie then jumps to a year later where Maya has made the Monday Moms program into a successful business and an app with her godson Dilly's help. Joan and all her other friends from the value store all work with her there now, and she's even still friendly with Anderson. Her value store's boss, Weisskopf, is also in touch with her as he's the primary investor for Monday Moms. Maya keeps on sending letters to Zoe, mentioning about her life and relationships. She wants Zoe to be happy and fulfill her dreams. One day, Trey unexpectedly visits her, and they are both happy to see each other after a long time. Maya promises she won't lie to him ever again, while Trey asks if she wants to start a family. She pauses for a while, and finally confesses that he has always been her family. In the final scene, Zoe has finally completed school in London and returned to the States. After learning that her daughter is back, Maya goes to see her in a park where they used to hang out together. She then tearfully asks if they can start over. Zoe, having missed her mother so much, subtly says that she was wondering if they could go for a run together. Maya takes this as a sign from her daughter to rekindle their bent relationship, and the movie ends on a happy note. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.